The word authority is birthed from the word author. And what this means is the authority of any is word. the authority of the author. It is the author who gives the authority to the work he or she and produces. And for us it is very clear for us to see who the author of the Bible is. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 lets us 17. know. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction and righteousness that the man of God be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work we see here that the Bible is the word and truth of God it is the pathway for every believer to be completely equipped for every good work we see that the Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture. therefore we know the authority of Scripture is God the most wonderful thing about the is Bible is that the author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. And for you to read and understand the Bible, you also need the Holy Spirit because it is a spiritual and book and it cannot be read like any other book. And the Holy Spirit is what allows us to experience spiritual things of God. This is why the people can read the Bible and have to completely different experiences. Now today I want to look at for different striking Bible verses that are extremely thought-provoking. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God can't be mocked. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. These days seven. it is quite common inside to find supposed Christians who claim to be the children but are of someone God. else's. Some are so good at disguising themselves that they have been able to deceive everyone around them into believing they are children Where of God. Where is their wolves in sheep's clothing? God is telling such people that he knows them and the quality of their works in the service to it him. It is easy to deceive people and get all the praises and but applause. God searches every heart and gives under every According man. to what he has planted. You can pull the wool over my you eyes. You can make me a believer that you are a super saint. But you can't deceive God. You see in the opening book of the Bible, in the book of the beginnings, Genesis, we are all enlightened of a terrifying reality that no sin can occur outside of the sight of the vision of the Lord. We see in Genesis, Adam and Eve sin, and it seemingly appeared that God was not there, yet God was watching. And this is something we need to keep in God mind. God is always watching. You cannot make a mockery out of God. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth he shall also reap. I don't think some of you heard that right. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows that he will also reap. You cannot constantly be angry at Rude people to other people and expect to live a peaceful if life. If you sow anger, you cannot reap peace in your life. You cannot sow hate in the lives of and others and expect to reap happiness. It is true what they say. We are today what we did yesterday and we are tomorrow what we did today. If you are unkind, you can expect unkindness to come toward you. If you are merciful, you can expect others to be merciful to you. If you are generous, others will be generous to you. You cannot expect to plant carrot and harvest seeds. tomatoes. It does not work in the physical realm. Neither does it work in the spiritual realm. God even operates this when way. When it comes to our forgiveness, the only condition to our forgiveness is that we may forgive others. You can't escape this law. The second striking Bible verse is, 
Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 And as it is appointed unto man, once to die, but after this, the judgment. The world we live in is a transient one. Whatever we see now isn't going to be forever. God has appointed it unto us to live once. This verse reminds us our days are numbered in this world, which is why we should daily keep tab of the way we live our life, because this same verse also highlights what is to come after we pass on. We cannot afford to live on our own accord or live a carefree life. Thus, Psalmist in the book of Psalm chapter 90 verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We have this life to live, after which then it is judgment, however. The outcome of our eternity is going to be determined. By the way we live our life, when we are here in this world, whether we choose to neglect the things of God, take them with light-heartedness, or decide to live like we owned ourselves, whatever we would did. either be accounted unto us as righteousness or condemnation. This is more the reason why we have to be intentional about the way we live our lives. Nobody knows the hour or time that will be. Jesus will come back to reclaim the same the longevity of the time allotted as individuals in this world. Which is why we should live each day for the glory of God with the Great Commission at the center of our lives. Our personal mantra should live with the consciousness of heaven and mind every time. This will put a lot of restraint when on us. When we want to do things that aren't God and unworthy of our faith, if we move with the weight of that strip, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29, God awakens semen. Whenever this sentence is he made, tend to picture a no-nonsense deals God. with his subjects with such high-handedness and gives them little or no room for condemning them. This is erroneous. God is a loving and kind God. He is called Father for a reason. He loves us and wants us to be just like him. He is a holy God and wants us, his children, to be holy just as he is holy. However, because he is such a holy and pure God, he detests we must serve him with reverence and fear. Yes, he is a loving God, but he is also a consuming fire. Revelation chapter 21 verse 3 and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Imagine a place where God's Spirit descends among humans and abides with them, a place where there are no worries or problems where one doesn't have to be bothered about what to eat, where or become. That place is heaven. The beauty and glory of that place is beyond description. We will see God face to face after we might have been transformed and left our mortal bodies. He is going to dwell with us and we will be with him all day and forever. Then we will look just like him. You will be our God, and we will be his beloved children. John sees a heavenly city descending to this new earth. He says that there will be a new Jerusalem, coming down from God as a bride adorned for her husband. This city is the dwelling place of God has now come down to earth. It symbolizes God's presence being given to the saints to enjoy him eternally.
This city is said to be very beautiful, like a bride prepared for a wedding day. And there is nothing more beautiful than a bride on her wedding day. Nothing can steal that day away from her. She is the star of the show, and that's how this new city will come down. All eyes will be looking upon it. In verse 3, John describes God's relationship with his people in this wondrous city. This verse shows us the physical restoration of the Edenic experience. God will dwell among his people. You see, when God would have made all things There will new, be no more disparity between the new heaven and the new earth because God will be accessible to man. Because our understanding of God will be full and will now know him as he truly is. He will be with us and be our God. God will be with them. They will learn of him, love him, adore him worship him serve him it is what you and i get to look forward to being one with day. our god our lord and our savior the bible is full of thought-provoking verses that will change your perspective on life